Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Dooley, and this video is about the network diffusion of innovations. Let's take a look at an example of an innovation, in this case, tetracycline, which is a pharmaceutical used as an antibiotic and see how networks impact adoption rates of new innovations. So tetracycline was a, a broadly useful uh, new medicine. Um, it was successful in the market after two months, 15% of doctors had tried it. And within six months, 50% of all doctors had. And those doctors that tried it, there was almost no discontinuance of usage after 18 months. However, if you look at the graph on the right, it shows two different groups of doctors. The yellow curve represents the chain reaction contagion by interconnected doctors. And then the red line shows the adoption rate amongst isolated doctors. By isolated and interconnected, we mean doctors that who have social networks that are connected with other doctors and therefore could learn about tetracycline and adopt it. And so, we see that here the network itself, the social network, accelerated the adoption of the innovation. The way an innovation diffuses through a network not only depends on the number of people who are connected in various ways and thus communicate with one another and share ideas, but also how those social networks are constructed themselves. So you see two diagrams there on the left would portray that as an inefficient, uh, as a situation where there was inefficient diffusion of new ideas because uh, essentially because everyone is connected to everyone else through that red central hub, uh, that central player, they all get the same information. And so there's not opportunity for novel information. On the network on the right, you see that individual is uh, represented by the red dot is connected to many otherwise disconnected groups. And this is the type of network where we would expect there to be a broader diffusion of ideas across these cliques um, that have uh, dis uh, connections at a distance. Malcolm Gladwell, in his famous book, Tipping Points, uh, brings up a few rules of thumb. Uh, one is the law of the few. So because of these network structures, Certain individuals in the social network have greater power than others for diffusion or for keeping diffusion from happening. Uh, there's the fact that even with a social network, um, the diffusion depends on the innovation or idea or new product that's, that's being uh, potentially adopted. And so it depends on how sticky that innovation or idea is as it passes on from one individual to another. And then finally, the power of context that uh, the social network itself is only one perspective on how ideas flow and that adoption and diffusion depend on other complexities within the system. Gladwell identified a number of different roles that people play within social networks. There's the connector who has a very long list of people that they're connected to um, and thus has kind of broad exposure to a very large network. There's the maven uh, who is the attractor to uh, connections. And so um, people connect with one another because of who they're connected to. And this happens not just in the social world, but in the business world as well. There's the salesperson who is the agent within this network who can effectively persuade others to adopt the new product or innovation. And finally, there are boundary spanners these are individuals that connect otherwise disconnected groups. In summary, innovations and technologies diffuse within social networks, networks of people and networks of organizations. Network structure influences diffusion. And so some network structures um, allow quick diffusion within a small group of people. Uh, but make um, it difficult to get ideas from the outside. And other network structures uh, have broad span and therefore connect otherwise disconnected groups through boundary spanners. Some people are more important for diffusion than others, depending not just on their 
uh, formal power um, or their expertise, but also their specific place within a social network. And finally, there are different roles that people play in facilitating or stopping diffusion of innovation or technology through a network. Thank you.